Hello, I am Wanda Deschamps, and today I have the very good fortune of sharing some of my thoughts about neurodiverse talent in the workplace. And I'm beginning with the definition of neurodiversity. Neurodiversity, coined by Australian sociologist Judy Singer, refers to differences across human brain makeups, including dyslexia, dyspraxia, autism, and attention deficit and hyperactivity disorder known as ADHD. I officially became a member of the neurodiverse population a little over three years ago when I was diagnosed with autism at the age of almost 47. In fact, I say that we're an autism family because my diagnosis was delivered two months after that of our younger son and our older son had been diagnosed a few years prior. One of the reasons I decided to become an autism advocate was because of my realization and my deep regret about the untapped skills and talents of individuals with autism and the larger neurodiverse population. Therefore, the opportunity to bring us into full participation in the workforce. To give some greater context, the majority of the members of the neurodiverse population, like the general disability population, are either unemployed or underemployed. And this unfortunate reality creates a great burden on the individuals as well as our entire society. One example is the autism unemployment rate, a staggering 92.7% compared to 14.3% for the general population, according to the results of a 2012 Canadian survey on disability. So why should employers recruit neurodiverse talent? Well, there is both a moral and economic imperative that I just shared with you. In addition, we are a strong and hidden talent pool. Dr. Rob Austin, a professor and researcher at Western University with a focus on neurodiversity employment, outlines in a Harvard Business Review article that neurodiversity is actually a competitive advantage. Yes, he and co-author a professor of business administration at Harvard University, share that our neurodivergent minds, quote, can bestow special skills in pattern recognition, memory, or mathematics. In other words, because we process information differently, we can identify innovative approaches and solutions that might otherwise go uncovered or overlooked. So what does recruitment and retention of neurodiverse talent entail? It involves embedding neurodiverse talent hiring within any inclusion, diversity, equity, and accessibility, otherwise known as IDEA, strategy. Therefore, recognizing the value, importance, and significance of neurodiversity along the vast spectrum of a diverse workforce. And just like any dimension of an employer's IDEA strategy, recruitment and retention of neurodiverse talent takes forethought, planning, care, attention, and most of all, commitment. However, the outcomes and results stand on their own. You only need to hear some of the testimonials from representatives of employers committed to diversity, such as Microsoft and IBM, to quickly understand our value. What are some specific examples of supporting your neurodiverse talent base? Our accommodating our needs usually comes in the form of supporting interpersonal communication, and working relationships. An example may come in the form of translation to help ensure solid, open, and trusting two-way understanding. It may also come in the form of assistive devices, for example, noise-canceling headphones, or assurance of a quiet space to retreat. Either and both help reduce and or remove the risk of sensory overload, which members of the neurodiverse population experience at higher rates than our neurotypical peers. What is really interesting is that employers often find that supports put in place to accommodate one person or group yields much wider benefit. And this quote from Kate Russell from Microsoft illustrates that. Inclusion and accessibility are incredible in that we find what employees request in the form of accommodations to suit their needs as individuals and do their best are actually excellent practices for many other facets of individual diversity. Example, subtitles included in PowerPoint created for people with hearing challenges also enable people who work in their second language. 
My firm, Liberty Co., with a focus on neurodiverse talent, is advocating for all these avenues towards greater diversity and inclusion, as well as offering a unique perspective on neurodiversity in the workforce. I say that neurodiverse talent belongs at all levels of organizations, sectors, and fields, from the boardroom to the C-suite to the office cubicle. Members of the neurodiverse population can flourish when our abilities and aptitudes are appreciated and match with organizational goals and priorities. What might this look like? Well, to give you a sense, let's take a moment and reflect on the group led by UK executive Charlotte Velour, who has launched the ION, Impact of Neurodiversity LinkedIn page. This is the first step of many to bring together neurodiverse individuals. The next step, they say, is to launch an Institute of Neurodiversity, which Charlotte is championing through her lived experience as a woman with autism who has recently publicly shared her diagnosis. These efforts across the board are aligned with a worldwide movement named the Inclusion Revolution launched in 2018 to spearhead broader thinking about disability and especially disability employment. If you wish to learn more, I encourage you to visit the Valuable 500 website at thevaluable500.com. This is the global CEO community revolutionizing disability inclusion through business leadership and opportunity. The front page of the website states, we need 500 national and multinational private sector corporations to be the tipping point for change and help unlock the social and economic value of people living with disabilities across the world. Because the potential of 1.3 billion should not be ignored. That is the 1.3 billion of us worldwide, the disability community of which I am a proud member. No, we should not be ignored and we are not going to be ignored. So let's push forward together in the inclusion revolution. Thank you.